Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Uh, we continue talking about um, limits of sequences and uh, today's topic is infinity. Now, um, as usual, I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the Unizor.com website because it contains detailed description uh, and notes for every lecture, plus registered students can um, take exams, for instance, which is very, very interesting. The site is free and you can take as many exams as you want, basically. All right, so, infinity. Um, I, I would like to start with something which basically should, should be inculcated in your minds. Um, in mathematics we are talking about, and this is the mathematics uh, on the level of high school, basically, there is no such thing as infinity. I, I, I want to start with this particular slogan. There is no infinity. So what is infinity and we are talking about? Well, casually we are talking about infinity and we mean something. But as everything else uh, in mathematics, infinity is abstraction. So um, in this particular case, well, number is also an abstraction, function is also an abstraction, but infinity is an abstraction of even higher degree, because with function we can have a graph, a formula, I mean, we have something more than just properties. With infinity we have only properties, and it's not even the properties of infinity, it's the property of sequences which are tending towards infinity not converging. Again, I would like to warn you against using the word convergent um, uh, as applicable to uh, uh, sequences which uh, do converge to certain real limits, like real number. Um, those uh, which go to infinity, we should not really speak about converging to infinity. So, what exactly is infinity and what do we mean? First, let me just give you an example of um, a sequence which basically can be very um, well qualified as going to infinity, so to speak. And here it is, for instance, um, like uh, 2 to the power of n sequence. Obviously, it's increasing and uh, gradually it becomes greater and greater than anything we would like to to fix as, as its boundary. So it's, it's boundless, it's limitless. And what also is important is that after it crosses certain boundary, it stays above that boundary, which is actually very similar to a um, concept of a regular limit when we are saying that the sequence which converges to a limit gets however close to that limit after certain uh, order number and then stays within uh, that particular distance from that limit no matter how small a distance we can uh, we can set before this 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 process so for for any uh, however small distance from that limit we will always be at certain moment in our sequence life closer to that particular um, border and stay close. So in this particular case it's above any border or boundary and it will stay above that uh, boundary um, uh, all the time after we cross it. So we are actually approaching the definition of a sequence which limitlessly grows. So let's just try to formulate it. Okay, the formulation is something like this. For any number A, real number A, concrete number A, there is an order number N. This is the order number after which 
we are saying we are crossing this limit such that um, x n x n would be greater or equal than n if n greater or equal than capital N. So all sequence numbers, all, all sequence members with numbers greater than this n will be above our border line A. Now it doesn't mean like in this case that our sequence is monotonic. No. It can grow and, and it can go uh, can go down again, but then it will go even further and move a little bit down. It's also quite possible. So not only this type of movement, but also this type of movement. However, in both cases, for any limit A, we can always find this point, this number N, after which we will be greater forever above that level we will be above that level that's that's actually what we mean when we are saying that our sequence is growing infinitely i used the word infinite in this case and basically it's nothing more this statement about this particular sequence x nth which grows infinitely or infinitely grows uh, so this statement nothing more than than this so whenever i'm saying that certain sequence is infinitely growing sequence it means that for any number a i will always be able to find order number capital n such that all members of that sequence will be greater or equal than a if uh it number the order number is greater than that capital n but this is a very long statement. So instead of saying this, we are saying our sequence grows infinitely. In exactly the same way as we are saying that our sequence has a limit A, which basically means that for any however small distance from the A, there will be found a number N after which our sequence will stay closer than that particular distance to, to, to limit A. So it's exactly the same thing. So it's using the word infinity or infinite in this case is nothing more than a shorthand for a bigger and more clumsy, if you wish, definition of what exactly this means. So consider the word infinity as a shorthand for describing the process which is infinitely growing. Now, we obviously have a symmetrical um, concept of negative in infinity. What, what does it mean that our sequence is infinitely decreasing? Well, or decreasing to minus negative, infi to, to negative infinity. What does it mean? Well, it means basically very similar to this, except I have to put this sign in reverse it it would be less or equal to any number a and a can be any however any any that's what's important this any it can be any which means however small in a negative sense i mean however big in absolute value with a minus sign right so no matter how far down to the left of the x-axis i will go as a border i will always find such a number after which my sequence members will be to the left of this particular number a and stay to the left forever for all other n greater than capital n all right so these are definitions of infinity which sometimes is called positive infinity and negative infinity now is it applicable as far as syntax is concerned to write something like this limit of 2 to the power of n as n goes to infinity equals to plus 
infinity. This is the sign for infinity. Um, well, quite frankly, I don't like it. This equal sign, which means it just implies that this is a number. So, probably people will understand you, what you mean. Um, I would rather prefer something like... something like this. It's increasing to infinity or plus infinity. Sometimes you can say this. Because this implies monotonic increasing. This implies just moving towards infinity. But in, in, in any case, uh, doesn't really matter how you will describe it syntactically. What's the meaning of this is, is that for any, I will use mathematical uh, character symbol for the word for all or for any. For any number A exists, this is the mathematical symbol for exist, exists number N such that if number, order number N is greater than capital uh, number N, immediately follows that XN greater or equal than A. So that's what it means. And then, yes, we can put, oops, we can put it this way. So this means exactly the same as this, it's just shorter. And in conversation, you can obviously say that something goes to infinity or grows to infinity or decreases to minus infinity or increases to plus infinity. Well, so basically that's my um, explanation of what infinity is. And let me repeat, there is no such thing as infinity. It's not a number, it's basically an assumption that there is a certain process which is, which is growing in such a way that no matter what kind of a border we will establish, it will be above that border. Or if it's decreasing, it will be below that border. So it's limitless growing or limitless decreasing. That's what it basically means. And now let me give you just a few examples of um, um, sequences. Okay, sequence number one. n squared plus one divided by n. Okay, what's important is that this is a polynomial of the second degree and this is the polynomial of the first degree and the greater the degree, the faster it grows. So in this particular case, this goes faster than this one, which means we should really expect it to go to infinity. Well, obviously you can divide it, and it would be the same as n squared divided by n, which is n plus 1 n. Um, as a side note, this is a monotonic uh, sequence, right? With n is equal to 1, it's 1 plus 1 over 1, which is 2. With n equals to 2, it's 2 plus 1 half, which is 5 halves, right? With n equals to 3, it's 3 and 1 third, which is what? 10 thirds. And these are increasing. All right? These are increasing. So it's monotonically increasing. And it's kind of obvious because as n increasing by 1, this thing is increasing by, by 1, and this one is decreasing but by, by, by some fraction, right? From 1 second to 1 third, or from 1 third to 1 fourth. So this is decreasing, but this is increasing, but this increases always by 1, and this is by fraction of 1, so which means we're always increasing as n grows. Now, how can I prove that this thing is infinitely growing. Well, let me just do it by definition. So for any a, whatever, however big I choose the number a, I should find the number n such that if my lowercase n greater or equal than capital N, my sequence would be greater or equal than a. All right? This is xn. Okay, so let's fix number A, however large, doesn't really matter. And I would like to find number N. So I would like to find number P 
basically I would like to resolve this inequality and would be a solution to this inequality, right? Can I solve it? Does it have a solution? Because if it has a solution and using the, the fact that this is monotonic it means that if I will find one particular n where it's true then everything higher than that would be also as well true, right? So, um, now n is positive so I can multiply both by n I will have n squared plus 1 greater or equal than a n or um, I can subtract positive number well, actually any number it should be greater than or equal to 0 now what is this? this is a quadratic uh, uh, polynomial quadratic polynomial now the coefficient with n square is 1 so on a graph it would look something like this, right? this is the parabola, which means that it's equal to 0 at these points and it's greater than 0 in, in this area, right? and this as, we, as well, but we are not re really interested because we are interested in increasing numbers n, right? so the solution to this is what a plus minus square root of a square minus 4 divided by 2, right? these are two solutions to the equality with, with equal so which means that if I will take the larger um, solution which is this one with a plus and so if n is equal to this then it would be exactly equal but n is supposed to be an uh, integer number so I shouldn't really say this one this might not be actually an integer but the next integer after that right so if my capital N is chosen as greater than this one then my um, sequence with numbers lowercase n which is, which is equal to capital N and further will be greater than zero, right? so that's how we solve it we have proven that for any A we have found this particular value such that if my uh, if my index, my order number is greater than this number um, my sequence members will be greater than A forever, it will stay forever because it's monotonic action ok, that's just one of the example and, and we have proven that the limit of this thing is infinity or, which is probably a better formulation it um, grows to infinity limitlessly grows to infinity alright, another example uh, for negative infinity ok, negative infinity I have tangent of minus p n minus pi n 2 n plus 1 now why did they choose this way? well let me just think about it I wanted basically something which grows to negative infinity, right? so I remember that the tangent has a graph, graph like that so if I will reverse it negative I will have this so I would like to as n is increasing I would like actually to move this way then my tangent would be going to, infinity, to, to negative infinity right? so what are these points? well these are the points well, minus to make it this way instead of original this way now, pi over 2, this is pi over 2 but I multiplied by n divided by n plus 1 
which is slightly less. The, the bigger n is, the, the, the closer n over n plus 1 goes to 1, which means my point is getting closer and closer to pi over 2, but never equal to pi over 2, because at pi over 2 it's not defined. Right? So basically that's, that's the origin of this particular uh, sequence. Now, all we have to do, we have to prove that we have, we, for, for any level A, negative in this particular case, we can always find the point after which all these tangents will be less than A, right? Well, again, this is definitely a, a monotonic uh, sequence because tangent is monotonic uh, function, we know about that. So, if we will find the point where uh, this tangent is equal to A, then all larger numbers will give us basically closer and closer, uh, they will be less than A and, uh, than, and, and closer and closer uh, to, to pi over 2, with the tangent being decreasing to negative infinity, right? Okay, so let's just find for any fixed number A, negative in this particular case, uh, we will find the point where this tangent is equal to A. And again, it will not be an integer number, N is an integer, so basically next after that integer number would be our, uh, would be our number which we are looking for, the number after which our sequence will be less than a. So, let's just solve this. Tangent of minus pi n over n plus 1, 2 times n plus 1. Let's solve when it's equal to a. Well, first of all, obviously tangent is odd function, so minus can be here, right? Now, instead of that, I will put minus here. So that's an equivalent equation. From now, we can find we can find that pi n over 2 n plus 1 equals to arc tangent of minus a. Sometimes people use tangent in minus first uh, power, but arc tangents is something which basically I'm more used to, a function inverse to a tangent, all right? So there is such a number, obviously, and now all I have to do is to solve it for n, right? So what's the solution? Pi n equals to 2 n arc ten of minus a plus two arc tan of of minus a so n goes here okay so what do I have n equals two two arc tangent of minus a divided by pi minus 2 arc tangent of minus a. Now let's think about it. As a, uh, as a grows negatively, which means it's decreasing basically, more and more, minus a would be increasing more and more. Now what is arc tangent? Now arc tangent is the angle tangent of which is equal to to this, right? So if this is growing to infinity, my arc tangent grows to pi over 2 times 2 is pi. So these two things are becoming closer and closer together. Now this is constant, so as, um, as we go closer to A, um, 
my denominator is getting smaller and smaller closer to zero right and this one is relatively close to pi so as a increasing to a negative well ne increasing by absolute value so minus a uh, is increasing towards plus plus infinity as it as it happens this thing is closer to to to, to pi and this y and this one is getting closer to zero so that's why this particular number is getting greater and greater <coughs> but anyway it's a concrete number so we can choose n to be greater than this particular expression choose integer n obviously because this is most likely is not in in integer so we choose this integer n and for all lowercase n greater than this one I will have my tangent to be below level a which is negative level a no matter what a is again we have proven um, that this particular sequence is decreasing to minus infinity because for any uh, level a we can find the number after which we will be below that level and final example is um, something which is not uh, a sequence which go to plus or minus infinity however it grows by absolute value now to make up this example I started with with something which does not have um, a proper limit which is sinus sine of n okay now sine of n is going up and down up and down up and down as n is increasing right um, but I would like actually to get infinity involved so I will multiply it by n so sine is basically um, bouncing between plus and minus one but this one is increasing infinitely increasing obviously so if I will consider this particular sequence it will behave something like this higher and higher up and higher and higher down so it will go to well plus infinity on this particular pieces and to minus infinity on these particular pieces which means we don't really go to any kind of a limit we cannot say that this is infinitely growing or infinitely decreasing sequence it's just sequence which does not have any limit and it doesn't grow or decrease it basically does both which means it doesn't really qualify for being called increasing or decreasing um, if we choose for instance any number um, a and we would like to find such a number in this sequence after which it's greater than a we will not be able to find it because after any number we can find obviously the wave which goes above it but then it will go below our condition was not only it should cross that border but it should stay over that border or below that border if it goes to minus infinity right to negative infinity so again same thing as there are cases with limits if you are approaching a limit and then go out from it again approaching and then go out it's not a convergent sequence it means just the sequence which does not have any limit and it's not convergent this also uh, represents an example of um, the sequence which has absolute value of its members is growing infinitely absolute value but the sequence itself is going up and down up and down which means it doesn't really uh, infinitely grow nor infinitely decrease okay that was it about infinity and remember there is no such thing as infinity it's just a short form for expressing our uh, um, 
characteristic of certain sequences that they are directionally going into some direction positive or negative and they are limitless so again the bottom line is we are talking about directioned and unlimited sequences directions up or down and limitless and that's why we are actually getting into this word basically infinity which means nothing more than I would, whatever property of the sequence I have just explained. You cannot add infinity or divide infinity, although you can symbolically say that, well, maybe there is some kind of a uh, operation between two sequences, which are, let's say, we are, for instance, you are subtracting one infinitely growing from another infinitely growing. Well, there are many cases and uh, there are different results which, which might result in this. This is something which we will call indeterminate uh, sequences. And it needs an effort to find out whether this sequence, which is basically a difference between two unlimited sequences, maybe it has some, some, some limit, maybe it doesn't. Same thing uh, if you divide one by another. I mean, if you have two infinitely growing uh, 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 sequences and you divide one by another, well, you can have different results. It all depends. And it all requires special attention, which we will def definitely spend some time for. And that would be a subject of the next lecture, where we will talk about these uh, indeterminates. That's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.